Are we live? We're live. Hello, everyone. My name is Jocelyn DeYoung. I serve as the Senior Associate Director of Admissions here at the University of Washington. And we're so glad you are here to join us tonight. Um, we are excited to answer your questions. I'm going to have my colleagues introduce themselves. Yeah, my name is Cameron. I'm a junior here at the UW. I went to high school, middle school in the Portland metro area, though about three years ago I moved to the Bay Area. Um, currently, I'm studying uh, creative writing and English. My name is Matt Bishop. I'm assistant director for recruitment here in undergraduate admissions at the University of Washington. I'm also an alumnus of UW. I'm from Snohomish, Washington, and I've been reading applications for the University of Washington for five plus years or so. So we got a lot of questions from you. Thank you. We're excited to answer them, but we can't answer all of them tonight, but we're going to do our best. So, But before we get started, I just want to say a couple things. Freshman applicants, if you haven't started, uh, the deadline is coming up next Wednesday, November 15th. So start your coalition application today. Don't wait. Um, and also, some of you had questions around our timeline. Deadline's November 15th, but uh, we'll be notifying students, freshman applicants, of their admission decision come uh, March 1st through the 15th. And it's a window of, of time, so um, stay tuned. All right. Great. Let's question. get into the questions, yeah. Um, so the first one we've got is from Nathaniel. He asks, how do running start students who are homeschool students enter their high school and running start information? Um, so that's a kind of a two-part question. Um, running start students uh, are essentially doing what's called dual enrollment. So you're getting both college credit and high school credit for uh, the coursework you're completing, um, which means on the coalition application at mycoalition.org, that's the name of the application platform we use, in the profile section, you would fill that coursework out both in the 9th through 11th and 12th grade coursework section, the high school coursework section, as well as in the college coursework section. So if you're doing Running Start or any dual enrollment program, make sure you indicate coursework in both of those areas. Um, and then, the other part to that question was the homeschool uh, student portion. Um, for any of the coursework that, um, you're, that isn't done through Running Start, just make sure you appropriately report that in uh, the high school coursework section. Okay, Gage uh, asks, I submitted my application in September, but I still haven't heard anything from UW. Is there anything else I need to do? Engage uh, you and many other students are asking this question, so thank you. Um, we haven't sent any official confirmations yet, but know that you can check on your coalition account to see that it has been successfully submitted. We anticipate sending email um, confirmations early December. At that time, then you'll be able to set up your UW Net ID and check your status. Um, we will let you know if you, we are missing anything, um, so be checking your email. Great. Um, Lily's asking, is the Honors College admissions process online and the same as non-honors? Um, so yes, the Honors College admissions process is actually at the very end of the UW part of the coalition application. Um, so get all the UW stuff done first. Then at the very end, it'll have a little checkbox asking if you'd like to apply to the Honors College. You check that, a couple of extra boxes pop up, fill out some essays, and that'll be part of the Honors application. Uh, we got a question just coming in from Casey. Do you guys read applications in the order received? Not necessarily, no. Uh, we get, last year we got about 45,000 applications and we're putting all of the documents and information together associated with those. Um, so that's part of why we, we don't have rolling admission. We uh, have one application deadline and one notification period because we don't necessarily read them as they're coming in. We, we uh, notify everybody at the same time. Okay, Peter asks, if I choose pre-science major, can I apply engineering program after year one in UW? So, um, Peter, it's really important for you and any other student who's considering engineering as a major that you list it as your first choice major because we have a new admission pathway called direct to college, which essentially means that if you're admitted to the University of Washington, you may also be admitted directly into the College of Engineering and have an opportunity then to kind of explore majors at that point. So it's more difficult to get in later uh, to the College of Engineering, so we really want you to list that as a first choice if that's an interest. All right, Marika is asking, is it difficult to get it, getting into your first choice classes? Not necessarily. So 
Um, the way you register for classes at the UW is it's um, sorted by your class rank, so seniors go first, then juniors, etc. Um, so personally, in my experience, I've always been able to get the courses that I need, um, especially with the tool called uh, Notify UW. It's really useful um, because it gives me a notification um, as soon as a seat opens up in a class that I subscribe to, for example, if the class is full. Um, and everyone will get that notification if they're signed up for it. Um, and it's kind of like a Hunger Games scenario where you scramble to get your phone and put in the codes and get into the courses. Um, but in my personal experience, I've never had difficulty getting to a class I need. Sounds a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> it all works out. All right. And then Eli is asking, does the UW want applications to send their official AP test scores and SAT subject test scores from the College Board? Um, another multi-port question. Um, so right now, um, we don't require AP test scores for our applicants. That will usually be after you decide to enroll here. Um, so we don't need those at this time. And um, in terms of SAT subject tests, we do not evaluate um, subject tests as part of our admissions um, review. Um, so if you've sent them in, don't worry. Um, it's not going to impact your application in any negative way. Um, but just know that we do not review um, subject tests as part of our review. Sanjana asks, my official school transcript only provides final grades. Is that okay for the self-reported grades section on coalition? Um, we don't require transcripts as part of the applications, so unless you've got coursework from overseas from a non-American high school, in that case we would need an unofficial transcript. Um, but otherwise you just self-report that coursework. And I think part of what you're saying, Sanjana, is that um, you only get one grade per year and that is fine. You could just, you would indicate that grades are reported on a yearly basis and then you would just report that single grade. Tadashi uh, asks another question here, just coming in. Hi, I was wondering, hello Tadashi. Uh, I was wondering, are acceptances and rejections sent by email or mail? Both? Yeah. <laughs> um, so we anticipate, we'll send letters of acceptance by um, letter, mail, snail mail. Um, last year we did send denies by email because we just wanted to rip the band-aid off and let you know sooner. Um, so we anticipate doing that again this year. Sanjana asks another question. Um, can culture for the application essay, I think you're referencing the second uh, cultural prompt, second essay which is the cultural prompt, can culture for the application essay include academic or social interests? Um, and the basic answer to that is yes. It can really include uh, anything you want to talk about. Uh, the idea that when you go to college you're going to be engaging people from a wide variety of backgrounds is hopefully true no matter where you go, but certainly at UW. And we want to get a sense as to what your sense of background or identity is. So that could be through however you define culture, through the lens of your race or ethnicity, your involvement with LGBTQ issues or who you are as a person from a small town or who you identify as a, a person who plays music, whatever it is. Um, you could talk about that uh, in that way. There's, there's no right or wrong answer. All right, Olivia has a question that we've answered many times, so thank you for asking this because a lot of people want to know, why is your application deadline for regular applicants so much earlier than every other school, and what prompted the decision to place the application on the coalition instead of the common app? So a couple, two-part questions, I guess. First answer in terms of the timeline, so we moved up our deadline this year to November 15th um, primarily because we want to notify students earlier. We've heard from many of you who have applied in the past saying, you just made me wait too long and we wanted to notify you earlier. So we moved it up, but unfortunately we still need the same amount of time to read applications. So that's, that's uh, part one. Um, in terms of joining the coalition, we're really excited about doing that. Um, the Common App uh, wasn't an option for us for a variety of reasons, one being uh, that we self students are required to self-report their um, high school coursework, and that's really critical to us being able to review applications in a timely manner. Um, the Common App at the time um, wasn't able to do that. We're excited to see that they, they can now do that. Um, so stay tuned. Maybe we'll join that later, but um, for now we're with the Coalition. Ashay is asking, can I apply for engineering honors after submitting my main application? Um, so let me say a couple of different things in trying to maybe answer what you're asking. Um, first of all, like Cameron indicated, to apply for honors, just general interdisciplinary honors on the application, you indicate yes when the question prompts you, and then it just uh, adds or will pop up two additional essay questions you have to answer. Um, Honors does have a departmental aspect, so when you say engineering honors, 
Uh, maybe you mean departmental honors. And that is something that you do uh, after you've enrolled. Yeah. Ricardo asks, is it easier to get accepted if applying for summer admission compared to fall admission? And the answer is no. Uh, we get fewer applicants for summer, but we also have fewer spaces. So um, the, the relative chances are, are about the same. Okay, Ruben asks, would applying for summer quarter of 2018... Oh, very oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ruben, I think you're on the same page as the previous uh, question. Would applying for summer quarter of 2018 as a freshman increase the likelihood of me being accepted into the school? So, like Matt said, no, uh, it definitely will not. And actually, we would, you know, if, if you really want to start in the fall, you should apply for fall, autumn quarter. Second part of Ruben's question, I'm currently a senior enrolled in Running Start. Would that factor increase the chances of me getting in? And I would say it definitely can. You know, when we're looking at applicants um, through this holistic review lens, we're really, really looking to see that you've challenged yourself in the high school, that you've um, taken the most rigorous curriculum that's available to you. And, and for some, that might be Running Start. For others, that might be AP or IB. Um, so yes, Running Start is a great option if that's available to you, as long as you're taking, again, Challenging courses. Yeah, the thing I'd say that could be uh, no yoga. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, you yoga. take yoga if you want to. <laughs> With Running Start, you have a lot of options in terms of the courses yeah. you take. So if you're only taking kind of introductory survey courses or PE or, or remedial yoga courses, or remedial courses, it, you know, the better option you. actually would be oftentimes to do the AP or the IB mm -hmm. or to just do um, rigorous Running Start courses. Mm -hmm. And you can actually do more rigorous courses in Running Start and math and science. You can go beyond what is available at the uh, high school level. Um, so if you do those types of things, running start, absolutely can That's be advantageous. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, uh, America wants to know, do transcripts and SAT scores, um, S SAT and ACT scores, have to be sent by November 15th as well, or just the application? Um, this is a great question. Um, so actually, for all test scores, ACT, SAT, um, our deadline for that is actually December 31st. So if you guys are taking those early December test settings, um, we will honor those regardless. Um, so what matters now is you get your application in, um, and then send us your test scores. Um, and again, that, de that deadline is December 31st. Brandon asks, uh, or says, I have a 3.993 GPA. Wow. Bravo. That's a very specific That's calculation. <laughs> but an average SAT score, 1110. Should I state my reasoning for it in optional SAC? I have legitimate reasoning for it. However, I'm afraid it will come off as an excuse and hinder my chances at getting into UW. Um, I would say generally, particularly because we don't require, um, nor do we actually want letters of recommendation, that if there's anything you think we ought to know that uh, is not communicated through your essays otherwise, you should absolutely mm -hmm. feel free to communicate that information. It, it won't work against you, and it could be potentially beneficial. Um, I would also say that if you're one of those students who's got great grades and your test scores are not as strong as you want them to be, um, I can say confidently that the coursework you've been engaged in, the rigor of that coursework and the grades you get in those coursework, in that coursework um, is weighed more heavily and, and um, speaks louder than uh, the couple of hours you spend um, taking a standardized tests. Though, again, those certainly are a factor, but um, usually are not, don't make or break an application. I will say one, one thing to add. Um, for those of you who are younger, maybe not a senior, but you know, ninth, 10th, 11th grade, um, Khan Academy has some great resources to help you improve your standardized test score, your SAT score. So you can actually import in your um, score results if you've taken a PSAT or SAT, and it will actually build a curriculum around how to beef up those areas that, that um, you need improvement in. So anyways, we've seen some students have had great results there. But next question is from Christina. How does UW weigh GPA? Kind of like what Matt was saying. So GPA certainly is a factor that's part of the holistic review, but really comes down to the, the actual courses that you're taking. Are you challenging yourself? Um, what high school are you at? For those of you from Washington, we have a lot of data around how your peers have done who've applied and enrolled at the institution. So we actually can utilize that as part of the application review process and understanding what a 3.6 GPA at you know XYZ high school means compared to another school. So um, we don't have to weigh it per se, but it is a factor. Sahil asks, if you got college credit through a community college, do we need to provide a transcript from that community college? At the time of application, we don't need that transcript. 
Um, but if you are admitted and you decide to enroll uh, to get credit for that coursework, we would require it, yes. And then Catherine asks, how hard is it for out-of-state students to be directly admitted into UW's computer science program? Um, let me just say generally that uh, the computer science program um, in terms of direct freshman admission is competitive for everybody, whether in-state or out-of-state. Um, of those students who are admitted direct freshman admission for computer science, the priority is to Washington State residents, um, but there are a handful of non-residents um, who can be admitted via direct freshman admission to computer science. Great. Uh, Kelly's asking, does UW look at SAT subject scores and what if they were already sent through the College Board? Um, so we touched on this a little bit earlier, but just again, um, we don't evaluate uh, subject uh, scores for the SATs. Um, but again, if you've already sent them through the College Board, um, there's no need to worry. It's not going to negatively impact your application or anything. Sorry, we had a little distraction. Our Director of Admission just popped in the door <laughs> unexpected, and so... Um, <laughs> I was Making caught sure. off guard. I was looking to see what was sure coming we're in. answering the questions. We're doing correctly. everything right. Okay. So far, so good. Uh, Kara asks, what is admit to major? Do you want to handle that, Jocelyn? I will handle that, um, Carol. So admit to major, so we have, there's three prim primary pathways by which a student would come into the University of Washington, and we have uh, direct to college, which you heard me speak about earlier, which is exclusive to the College of Engineering. We also have some programs, there's nine, that directly admit freshmen into the major. Now, for those programs, uh, most students, it's a small percentage that they're admitting to those programs. Uh, most are going to come in as a pre-major, take prerequisites, and then apply um, to that major at a later point. Um, but we do identify which programs those are in our publications, so um, you might have seen that indicated and we also talk about it on our application as well. And Brandon wants to know on the UW portion of the coalition app, how do I know which program to put down? Some are majors that you have to get accepted to after prerequisites, but I'm an incoming freshman. So kind of the same thing Brandon where you've got three different uh, ways that you come in um, to the institution. So we just really want to know if it, particularly if you're interested in a program that you're not accepted to technically until a later point in time. It's helpful for our advising team to know how many students are interested in a particular program that will help us when you come for orientation to assign you to the appropriate um, advisor, which sessions to go to on, on the academic preparation piece. Uh, part two of your question is that you're trying to choose music as a second option for additional programs. So we do ask for a second choice um, major. We don't it's not used uh, to make any decisions in any way, shape, or form, but again, for advising, it's really helpful. Um, your question specifically is that there are two music majors listed, and I, I get that. I was actually really confused about this earlier <laughs> uh, this year when this came up. So we, uh, there's a Bachelor of Arts in Music, and there's a Bachelor of Music. So those are the two options that you have to choose from, and um, if you have follow-up questions, we're, I'm happy to, any one of us can help you with that. So. Margo's asking, does submitting an application the day before the deadline lessen your chances of acceptance more than applying back in September? Absolutely not. Um, again, we kind of touched on this earlier. Um, it doesn't matter when you submit your application, you're still going to be holistically reviewed, just like everyone else. Um, one of my best friends, he applied right before the deadline at 11.59 p.m. He got in just <laughs> fine. You'll be fine, Margo. Don't give yourself or us heart attacks by waiting until the very end. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Why wait? But you can actually, last year, you could see uh, when we were looking at applications like what time they would come in, and there were a handful that came in at 11.59 mm -hmm. and 35 seconds. It was yeah. kind of exciting <laughs> to see that. But don't be those. Don't be students. that. Uh, Gloria asks, I am in Running Start, so some of my college classes count as my high school classes. When calculating how many years of a certain subject I have taken, do I count my Running Start classes double? No. Uh, you would report them twice, but you wouldn't count them twice in terms of, I think you're referencing at the end of the UW questions section of the coalition, it asks you to tell us how many years of English and how many years of math you've done. Um, uh, one running start quarter is equivalent to one high school year. So um, keep that in mind when filling that section out. Uh, I think it's Anisi, and An Ness. Sorry, Sorry if I'm, I'm yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, asked, would it be helpful to send a resume uh, no supplemental information. What we ask for is what we need. So no letters of recommendation, no resumes or portfolios, um, and no transcripts. Thanks. Good question. 
Brandon wants to know, how do I apply to honors? And Brandon, when you, um, so the coalition application is kind of, I like to think of it as two parts. You've got the profile, which is 80% of our application, and then you've got the UW-specific questions, which is that remaining 20%. And the thing about the application is you have to progress through each page before you can see the next page. And it's towards probably four or five pages into the uh, UW-specific questions. We'll ask if you'd like to apply to honors. You say yes, and it opens up some additional questions that you can answer, and then you'll be considered for honors. Sophia is asking, what happens if the courses we submitted for our current senior year end up changing second semester? Could that affect our admittance? It's not a bad idea to let us know. Just email us so we have something in writing from the email address you indicate on the application. Let us know if there's um, a change. The, the most important or the most influential changes would generally be related to if, if your minimum entrance requirements or what we call college academic distribution requirements or caters, if those are affected. So for example, we require two years of world language. And if you are projecting that second year of a world language senior year and uh, you end up not completing the second semester, that could affect whether we'll even be able to consider you um, because your minimum in, uh, admission requirements uh, will not have been met. So particularly in those circumstances, um, you'd want to let us know so we could find a, a solution to that challenge. And just to uh, know, the email, if you ever need to reach out to Boris, again, like we were saying, for those cater requirements, if you're changing your courses, is ask UWADM, as in the first few letters of admissions, at uw.edu. And you can email us with those questions or changes to your subjects. And Alice is asking, once admitted to UW, do you accept deferrals for a gap year? And the short answer is no, Alice. We would encourage you, if you're considering a gap year, to wait and apply for the year that you actually want to attend. Um, certainly, we understand that there are things that come up, uh, military service, um, so we'll work with you if, if, if that's the issue, but really we, we encourage you to apply for the term that you want to enroll in. Victoria is asking, what should be the format to write the 300-word essay? And I think you're asking again about the short response um, uh, regarding culture. Uh, how should it, should it be about a specific incident? or a person or community that helped me, uh, or how I became something better. Um, and any of those sound great. Yeah, there's no right or wrong answer uh, to how you answer that. Um, like I said uh, to an earlier question, there's really any number of ways you can talk about culture or identity and, and uh, answer that question. And uh, so I got really <laughs> caught up in thinking about all the myriad ways you can answer that question. <laughs> because uh, we, we do get a lot of impressive responses. Um, uh, How asks, can international students use the SAT score to waive TOEFL scores? And the answer is yes. If you get, I think it's a, yes, uh, it's a 580 on the evidence-based reading and writing section of the eight SAT, sorry, 580 on the evidence-based reading writing section of the SAT, then that would waive the TOEFL or IELTS requirement. Or a 22 on the English section of the ACT, if you take the ACT. Uh, sorry, I'm going to mispronounce your name. Vadim. Vadim, thank you. Absolutely. If my Spanish credits are also from middle school, how do I report those? So basically, the important part is if they're on your high school transcript, you'll go into the coalition profile, the, whether they're grades 9th through 11 or 12th grade, you're going to go into that section and you're gonna, there's a little button that says middle school and you're gonna press the middle school button and then you can self-report it there. So, good question. Sarah asks, is my 500 word essay, my 500 word essay is about 575 words. Doesn't sound like a 500 word essay. Oh. Uh, is that okay or should I revise it? I would recommend revising it only because it does cut you off at 500 words and we wanna read everything. I will say, from my experience reading applications, I've read some that literally get cut off because students don't realize that, and you're like, but I, but I wanna know what, what was the rest of that thought? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, condense that down to 500. Um, part two of that question is, I'm a running start student, where do I enter my classes for my senior year? Again, great question. Um, we do have a link on the admit.uw.edu website. Um, on the how to apply under the freshman page, but what you'll want to do is be sure to list it on the 12th grade uh, coursework section, so in the high school, but also on the college coursework section. So that's true for anyone, not just Running Start students, but any student that's getting college in the high school work or other dual enrollment. I know Running Start is um, specific to Washington State, and we've got viewers out there from all over. So, mm. All right, uh, Sydney's asking, how to apply for merit-based scholarships? Was the regular application enough? 
Yes, actually. So for uh, you're the regular application, you will be considered for many merit-based scholarships. Um, though I will say, if you're also interested in specific departmental um, scholarships, you should check out their websites and see if they have a separate application just to make sure that you're covering all of your bases. And she's also asking, um, should I submit all of my test scores? Absolutely, Sydney. Um, we do super scoring, so we're going to take all of your test scores, compile them into one super great SAT or ACT um, test, and it'll be in your advantage. So I do recommend you guys send all of your um, official test scores. Sean Kim is wondering, is it possible to go to UW Bothell and transfer to computer science at UW Seattle? Um, this is a great question and it requires a nuanced answer. Technically anything is possible. <laughs> anything. We're boundless here. Um, <laughs> but there's a couple uh, things about um, transferring, particularly from UW Bothell or UW Tacoma, even though those are University of Washington campuses. In the transfer admission process, UW Seattle is required to give significant priority to students coming from Washington State Community Colleges. Um, about 80% of our spaces have to be reserved. Um, in this last year, I think it was around 85% of those spaces are reserved for students coming from Washington State Community Colleges. The basic philosophy behind that is that students at the community college, well, well, we're a state university, so the Washington State Community College aspect makes sense there. but. Also, the idea that students at the community college level can't complete a bachelor's degree where they're at. So as a state university, it, uh, it is part of our responsibility to help them make that transition to a, an institution where they can get a bachelor's degree. All of that said, what that translates into is students coming from four-year schools. Um, last year had an admit rate, transfer admit rate of about 18.5%, which is very competitive. Um, whereas the admit rate for students coming from Washington State Community Colleges, the transfer admit rate was about 66%. So it's almost a 50 point difference. So if your ultimate aspiration is to come to UW Seattle and to transfer there, um, whether it's computer science or any other program, you're going to be best positioned to do that if you are transferring um, from a Washington State Community College and generally with 90 credits and strong preparation for your intended major, um, which for computer science means completing all their prerequisites and also applying to that department specifically. And that's my answer. Oh, he had a second part to his question. <laughs> um, can, the Sean Kim, can we go back to that last one? Uh, I think he was just asking what the GPA um, requirement was. Yeah. And sorry, I got excited talking about transfer <laughs> admission. What's the requirement for the GPA? Um, computer science transfer admission, uh, they are, if you're looking at the statistics, and computer science actually has a fantastic website that has a lot of information, both about freshman and transfer admission at CS. Washington.edu. Um, they have, um, I would say, around an average of like three uh, eight or so. Um, typically, starting about three five is where you're going to be competitive in terms of a transfer um, admission GPA. So the next question is from Trinity. She asked, "Does computer design, specifically, it sounds like robotic design, count as a fine arts credit?" And I would say. Um, so what we rely on is how your school or school district classifies the course. So if they're counting it as, a, as an art class, then we would do the same. Matt, I don't know if you have anything to add specifically around. There is some variation around that. Sometimes courses that are considered more vocational technical, we actually may not consider it as, as a fine arts credit, even if your high school um, does. I would say uh, that's a great, we'd, we'd probably have to actually talk to your high school and see what the course description was. Description. So if you just emailed us at askudub, ADM. Ask you, yeah, that's the email yeah. address. <laughs> askudub, ADM. At uw.edu. At uw.edu. Uh, uw. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Kim. Yeah. <laughs> we could, we could uh, answer that more fully. Okay. Uh, Brenda asks, other than submitting the coalition application, what other things do I need to have done to complete my application for UW? Um, submit your test scores, so um, SAT or ACT, we need those by December 31st. Um, if there's anything we're missing or maybe anything that was incomplete, we will uh, rest assured reach out to you and ask for that information directly. Uh, Sayili asks, do you ever give aid to out-of-state students, either merit scholarships or need aid? Um, we have a merit scholarship specifically for non-resident applicants called the Purple and Gold Scholarship. Last year, over 50% of mm -hmm. um, enrolled non-residents got that. Um, one reality, I should say, 
to be transparent and honest with regard to public universities is our financial, our need-based financial aid. We, we tend to give priority to Washington State residents for that, um, but we absolutely encourage all applicants to still, still submit the, the free application for federal student aid, the FAFSA. Um, with regard to that merit scholarship that's called the Purple and Gold Scholarship, all you have to do is apply for admission to be eligible for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Arthur uh, just asked, how can I check my application status? Or at least how can I be sure the Office of Admissions has all of my documents and required components? Great question, Arthur. Um, we'll be sending an email to you probably in December or so, um, which will introduce you to the UW Net ID. You can set that up. That will be a portal by which you can see if there are any outstanding items, but mostly we'll be communicating directly with you if we're missing anything. Um, I just want to say you can also check your coalition account and see that it was successfully submitted there as well. So, good question. Connie says, I'm a junior in high school carrying 90 units this year. Um, I will have enough credits to graduate early and meet your minimum entrance requirements. I wish to also study abroad to learn a foreign language for a semester in what would have been my senior year and work the rest of the time to save up for the trip in college. Will it be held against me if I graduate early to study abroad versus staying and completing additional challenging high school coursework? Oh, I'm getting all the nuanced questions, <laughs> which is fun. Um, so complicated answer, but I've got one for you, Connie. Um, here's the thing, when you're applying for admission to any college or university, you're applying for a limited number of spaces relative to the rest of the applicant pool, which for us was 6,700 incoming freshman spaces this last year for about 45,000 applicants. When we're evaluating individuals for admission, we are comparing all of the characteristics that we consider important to the rest of the members of the applicant pool. So rigor of curriculum is hugely important for us. Uh, at the University of Washington, particularly senior year curriculum, going beyond minimum requirements, having at least four years of math, having more than two years of world language, having more than two years of lab science, that can be really advantageous. Taking AP or IB or doing uh, running start coursework, the rigor of your curriculum can be absolutely an influential factor in an admissions decision. Um, if you are taking a year off um, after having completed just the minimum admission requirements, I would say confidently that in terms of that particular characteristic, you are not going to be as competitive as you otherwise would if you stayed to take pre-calculus or calculus or stayed to take a third or fourth year of world language um, relative to the other applicants in the applicant pool who are going to have four full high school years of, of um, high school coursework. That said, does that mean we don't value uh, kind of unique experiences or your interest in studying abroad? Um, absolutely not. Those can be hugely influential and, and great experiences, particularly when you're ultimately filling out a college application. Um, oftentimes, those are perhaps most productive when students are uh, taking a gap year or Engaging in those experiences in the summer or, or doing a study abroad program even through their high school sometimes. Um, but I would hesitate to suggest that you'd be as competitive, competitive as an applicant with only three years of high school coursework relative to going beyond minimum requirements um, and having the full four years. I would, I would suggest doing a full four years of high school. And I would just add you can study abroad here. Yeah, one okay. of the largest study abroad programs on the West Coast. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Melissa asks, is it possible to get rejected from your first direct major college business but still be admitted to the university but would need to select a general university major? So I just, I guess I would answer this mostly by saying when we're making admission decisions, we're not looking at your first choice major. So yes, absolutely, you can be admitted to the university but not directly to a major or to a college. And depending on which program it is, um, you might not necessarily have to choose a different major. You might just continue to pursue the prerequisites and then apply to that program like Foster School of Business at a later point if you don't come in directly as a freshman. Um, College of Engineering would be a little bit different. Um, but again, yeah, we make admission decisions without regard to um, the major that you put as your first choice. Kelly's wondering, what are some scholarships available to out-of-state students, and is there a separate application process for it? Really, the primary scholarship is that purple and gold scholarship um, that's specifically for out-of-state students. 
um, and there is no separate application process for it. You just have to apply for admission and you're automatically considered. Great. Uh, Ashley's asking, I have completed my profile, but I can't find where to submit my essay. Um, this is also a common question. Um, so when you guys are filling out the coalition application, um, you'll do the coalition profile first, which is non-university specific. So um, it's like the common app where you fill it out and that'll be applied to all of the universities you decide to apply to. And then for the actual essay section, that's included in the UW part of the application. So when you add UW to the schools, uh, the list of schools that you're interested in, start doing the UW application, um, that's where you'll see the essays. Um, so fill out the coalition profile, select the UW, and then you'll find the essays and that's where you put them in. Yeah, and I think the critical piece there is that you have to make sure you actually add mm -hmm. the University of Washington to your list of schools so that you can then click the button that says start application. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, Joel is asking, when you say submit test scores, do the scores need to come directly from SAT, ACT, or the, do the scores entered into the coalition app suffice? Um, we do need you to send the official scores from the testing agency, um, and we need to get those by December 31st. Ford is asking, how do I answer the question about adding diversity to the University of Washington you are not a minority. Who's given me all the tough questions? <laughs> um, but this is a good question. This is a and fantastic this is, question. Uh, I mean. And a conversation that will hopefully continue throughout your life as mm -hmm. it relates to the idea of diversity. Um, and and uh, I've referenced, I think, that short cultural response a couple of times. And, and my basic answer has been, um, in terms of how you approach that, think about your sense of culture or identity um, in any number of ways. Uh, if you don't identify with a particular group, what are the groups that you identify with? Um, uh, when I was in high school, I was kind of a theater person who poorly played baseball but really liked to write songs, who lived in Australia for a year. Any of the, I could have written about any, four of, any one of those four things when I was talking about culture or identity. Um, so uh, really, whether a student is uh, how they identify in terms of their race or ethnicity should have, um, is only one of many, many ways they can answer that question. And I would actually encourage you when you're filling out any college application to think beyond, uh, to be creative and think outside the box. Um, and uh, particularly with regard to those types of questions, there's a lot of opportunities um, to kind of be creative and unique in how you talk about your own sense of culture or identity, regardless of, of what you think the school is looking for or how interesting you think that may be. Everybody has a fantastically interesting set of potential answers to that question. Mm -hmm. Jared, uh, as an average student, I was wondering if extracurricular and essays play that big of a part when considering students in your school. This is a great question because we do have a holistic review. Um, and we kind of think, I, the way I articulate the University of Washington's holistic review, and not just me, but really the faculty, and I'd like to take credit for it, but the, uh, uh, it is broken down into, uh, on one hand, um, academic factors and characteristics, and on another hand, personal achievements and characteristics. Um, so when you talk about personal achievements and characteristics, extracurricular activities, the essays, uh, your uh, personal life experience, having co overcome extenuating circumstances, those can absolutely be influential. That said, they're really there uh, to enhance an application because academic factors always lead the way. A student needs to demonstrate that they're going to be successful academically. We want you to be successful when you're here. We want you to graduate in time, to do well in your classes, to go on and lead uh, fantastically, wonderfully, successfully, lot successful lives, although we don't guarantee that. Um, <laughs> but uh, the academic factors in terms of rigor, curriculum, GPA, test scores, those are the things that um, are of primary importance. And then uh, your extracurricular activities and essays can absolutely enhance your overall, um, how you, your application is considered overall um, with regard to admission and, and scholarships as well. Jordan <coughs> just asked, <coughs> excuse me, kind of so along the same lines, how weighted are the essays and short answers looked at on the application? And Jordan, kind of like what Matt was saying, you know, academics are going to drive the decision because, as he also said, we're an academic institution and we're concerned about making sure that who we bring in will be successful and prepared um, for our classrooms. And so while the extracurricular and the essay provide uh, more information about who you are as a student and can maybe be more of a tipping point factor 
um, they're not going to be what's driving the actual admission decision. And Destiny asks, are you still eligible for the Husky Promise if you graduate from a high school in a different state but have a Washington State ID card and also come to Washington State in the winter and summers? So we're just missing fall and spring. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I, I just want to unpack the question a little bit because Husky Promise, for those of you outside of the state of Washington, is our commitment to our residents in state that we will meet um, for those students who have the most needs, so Pell eligible students, Pell grant, um, we will meet the cost of attendance. And so we do that in a, in a variety of ways. Um, so it doesn't matter where you graduate high school per se, but if you're a Washington uh, resident, you're, you're eligible for that program. Um, so it sounds like maybe you have a summer slash winter home here um, and that you're not a true resident, so I'd say you're probably not eligible, but I would, would need more information to, to better answer that question. And residency can be uh, complicated enough that we have our own residency classification office, mm -hmm. and they have a thorough uh, website. Uh, if you just go to the uw.edu or admit.uw.edu, either one of those, and search for residency, um, all of the parameters necessary to establish residency or what is required to qualify for residency are out outlined there. So Shelly Shelly is, is wondering how long it takes <laughs> for test scores to get to you. In other words, how early must we send them? Um, usually, I, I would suggest, of course, that you indicate UW as the scores, one of the schools, rather, to which uh, your scores are automatically sent, especially if you... Uh, are taking the test um, in December, and I think the November test date's already passed, so if you mm -hmm. had taken it, uh, so they're automatically sent. Usually it takes technically like two to three weeks, but if, you've, if you're taking the December um, sitting of the SAT or ACT, uh, we should, that should give you plenty of time to have them to us by December 31st. Sadie's wondering how important is community outreach on the application, um, and I think you're asking perhaps how important is community service on the application and and I talked a little bit about personal achievements and characteristics being one of those general sets of factors that can be certainly influential and enhance an application and that could be community service that could be involvement in student government extracurricular activities having a job taking care of your siblings after school and, and because nobody else is available to do that um, that not necessarily allowing you to do things like student government and whatever it is you do outside of academics um, we want to know what those things are, and community service can certainly be um, uh, an important, valuable experience that fits that description. Okay. So, yeah, I can answer yeah, this. Uh, right. Grace is asking, if we get in, how or when do we apply to our major? Um, so I recently actually got into my major about a week ago. Um, it was a pretty straightforward <gasps> process. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Um, it's a pretty straightforward process. Yeah. Um, it depends on the major. So again, you're going to want to Google this or check the internet. The internet is your best friend. Um, depending on which department you're interested in, um, it will change. Um, so for, for me personally, um, I'm an English major, so all I had to do was declare English after checking the prerequisites, make sure I had all the courses out of the way, went to an advisor, I declared English, and then for the creative writing option, I checked the website, um, saw that there was an online application that I print out, and submit with some extra materials and I just drop that off by the deadline um, and typically what you'll see here for students is that's about the end of their sophomore year beginning of their junior year um, so again beginning of my junior year personally so I did that this time um, so typically again check the website um, and that's usually around sophomore or junior year um, you'll see students start to apply and get into their majors hopefully <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah. um, Alex asks is there a way to verify you have received all of my documents and the short answer is no, not right now, um, but again, we will reach out to you if we're missing anything or something seems incomplete based on what you self-reported in terms of the coursework. Um, so keep checking your email. Nick is wondering, can you apply both as a freshman and transfer student if you are a part of Running Start? No. Um, but that's a fantastic question because it can be confusing. So the distinction is if you are using Running Start to graduate from, I mean Running Start is a tool to graduate from high school. So if you're in Running Start and you are interested in applying for the fall of the year you're graduating from high school, so for students who are seniors this year, um, if you're a senior and you want to apply for fall 2018 admission, you have to apply as a freshman applicant. Um, and that would mean we require the SAT or ACT and all of the other elements of the freshman application. That said, 
uh, if you don't apply for the fall, and even if you necessarily um, take some time off, for any quarter following that fall 2018, you'd be considered a transfer applicant and would be considered under the parameters of transfer admission and those application requirements. I'm going to say one thing about that. I think p part of the reason it's confusing, um, or maybe the concern rather, is that by applying as a freshman, you're not going to get credit or those transfer credits from your community college, and that's not true. So essentially, if you're admitted, you decide you want to enroll that summer before you come to advising and orientation, you're going to send us your final transcript, and we're going to give you all those credits. They're going to change your class standing, so you're still going to get credit for, for doing the running start work. So. Yeah, there's a distinction between the, the application process and your class standing once you arrive. So you could apply as a freshman applicant, but if you have an associate's degree, you'd actually come in once you enroll as a junior with 90 credits. Ben is wondering if you can apply for the interdisciplinary honors program after you're admitted. And yes, absolutely. Um, so after you're admitted, you can apply to the honors program your freshman and sophomore year. Um, we'll should do that last year. Um, but there's still time if you don't apply for the initial application. Okay, Olivia, um, million dollar question. What is the acceptance rate for those students coming from out of state? And last year, so for our freshmen who joined us um, autumn 2017, it was a 44% acceptance rate, I believe. Um, 44 or 46? 46 total, it was around 43 44. for non-residents. 43, I'm getting corrected. Mm -hmm. 43, okay. Yeah. And for international, it was? 37. 37, and for residents, it was 59.2%. I knew yeah. that one. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay. uh, ben is asking, how can I get a scholarship as an international student? Um, check at, in your home country, maybe? Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's not... <laughs> Sorry, we really don't have a lot of scholarships for international students, and that's and that's the truth. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, though, once you get into your major, there may be opportunities um, departmentally for scholarships. Um, I said that kind of jokingly. I shouldn't have said that, but I advise that to all students, regardless of where they're coming from, whether they're in-state, out-of-state, or out-of-country. But checking locally is always a good option to find uh, scholarships mm -hmm. before you come here. Bethany says, I've taken English language development courses for my speech disability and I mentioned them in my essay. Will I need to send in legal documents to validate that I have taken ELD? And the answer is no. Just talk about that in your essays and on the application. Um, Eric asks, how do applications for international students from Europe work? Are there any important things to consider here? Um, and there's really no distinction between international students from um, Europe or from other areas of the world other than I mean we have an international admission staff that is familiar with the uh, educational systems from around the globe um, so we know how to evaluate credit and understand it in the context of the factors that we consider important for the application um, if you uh, were educated in um, uh, countries uh, Canada Australia uh, the United Kingdom um, other countries where the primary language is English, uh, even as an international student, we, we wouldn't require the TOEFL or the IELTS or English proficiency results. That's the only really um, minor difference for students in that situation. Debbie. Debbie, what yes. specifics do you look for in the essays? Uh, and Debbie, that's, we don't look for specifics so it's much. As, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> you'll tell me about, no. Um, in the essays, that's another situation, the, the primary personal statement is, is another situation where there really is no right or wrong answer. I would say what we're looking for is twofold. One, we want to know that you can write well, and whether you major in English or engineering when you go to college, you're going to be writing a lot. So can you write well? The second thing is, it's an opportunity for you, as, for you to tell us something about um, yourself, the context in which you engaged the academic experiences and grades that we see on the application. Um, so that could be any number of things. I think the most resonant essays for me are those that are stories, because I'm reading probably a couple thousand applications uh, within a couple of months. And so like any person who reads things, <laughs> ones that are in story format are, tend to resonate pretty nicely, um, and ones that are unique. Uh, and that can be hard when you're reading 45,000 applications overall. That's the number of applications we got last year. Um, so don't feel, we're not expecting you to win a Pulitzer Prize or to have 
developed a cure for some um, unforeseen disease. The, uh, the thing is just be authentic to yourself, tell us a story perhaps about a singular experience that was transformative and, and that reflects a bit more about who you are. Don't feel like you, do not try, please do not try to tell us your whole life story. Just tell us about a, a moment um, or a singular experience that um, reflects something larger about who you are. And if it's authentic, it'll be valuable to us. And I would just say, I, from experience, some of the more popular things we get to read about, uh, sports injuries, which you guys are all getting hurt out there. <laughs> Be careful. Uh, and mission trips. And not to say that either one of those is, is good or bad, but just know that, that those are um, topics that we do tend to read a, a fair amount um, on. So. On to Connor's question. Uh, Connor, uh, his family moved to Bellevue um, in 2016, but I stayed back in California to finish my junior senior year. Would I be considered an in-state applicant? Should I use my Bellevue address or California address? And I think there may be many of you out there who maybe have a family member, one or another or both, living in Washington, and maybe you're going to school elsewhere. And I would say, as long as your family is claiming you as dependent, or the the individual, the the mo mother, father who lives in Washington, is claiming you as a dependent you are eligible for in-state tuition but there is some paperwork that you'll need to do um, I would refer you to the residency office here on campus and they can um, help facilitate that process to get the paperwork in so use your I guess back to the question about which address Connor you want to use the address that you receive mail at and then a permanent address which would probably probably be your folks place um, in Bellevue Thomas is asking what are your veteran benefits um, and I would be fitting because it's almost Veterans Day. That is so yes, that's, that's, that's a good uh, apropos question. Um, that said, uh, <laughs> I uh, none none of us are financial aid um, mm -hmm. counselors, and so I don't want any of us to misspeak mm -hmm. or misrepresent what those benefits might be. I can say that um, we've got specific counselors in our financial aid office who work with veterans and are fantastic to connect with and can speak to you specifically about what you might qualify for. So um, you could email us at askuwadn, you got, got yeah. it finally, <laughs> at uw.edu and we can connect you with um, those folks or you could reach out to financial aid directly. And I would just add the Veterans Center upstairs um, is great and they'll work with prospective um, <laughs> students as well. Yeah. So. Um, Sean Attell, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Sean Attell is asking, how do I send in my transcripts? Um, great question. Uh, right now, if you are a U.S. domestic uh, high school applica applicant, we don't actually need your, uh, your transcripts. We don't need your application. We don't need your transcripts at this time of the application. Um, so if you have any overseas, non-U.S. Uh, school, um, say like high school coursework or anything of that sort, or if you're a homeschooled student, we will need your transcripts. But again, U.S. domestic high school applicants do not need to send the transcripts at that time. But with that being said, um, for future purposes, if you do need to send us your transcripts, um, we accept them electronically via Naviance, Parchment, uh, eScripts, um, or you can mail it if it's a sealed and official transcript. And finally, if you have a sealed official copy yourself, you can always bring it down to the Office of Admissions. Were you reading that from somewhere? That was it's really It's all up here. He, gets, he uh, helps answer the phone, yeah. so he, we get this question. Um, yeah. Brandon. Just to clarify that a little, not to clarify, because it was wonderfully clear. Uh, <laughs> but. The, uh, essentially, the vast majority of students, we won't need yeah. high school transcripts mm -hmm. from. You only need to submit an unofficial transcript if you have high school coursework from abroad mm -hmm. that's not at an American high school. Mm -hmm. Right? Did I get that right, Johnson? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Live question here from, I'm sorry. Shub? Shub? Yeah. I think Shub. I'd go. Yeah. All right. Shub. Hey. Uh, if you have impeccable grades but are not involved in any sports, would that impact your chances of getting in? However, you have done a lot of volunteer work and are involved in clubs. Who do you think Shub's talking about? A uh, friend. <laughs> Probably. Some, yeah, yeah. A very specific question. <laughs> yeah. uh, we don't care if you do sports or not. I'll just yeah. say that. I mean, <laughs> it's yeah. fine if you do. It's fine if you mm -hmm. don't. So it sounds like you maybe you're, you have impeccable grades, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you also have an impeccable, rigorous curriculum. Mm -hmm. Um, however, we've done a lot of volunteer work and are involved in clubs. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I think, um, again, academics is really going to drive the decision, but we want to see that you can balance some other things as well, and that's helped shape you as, a, as an applicant. Um, so certainly volunteer experiences and club involvement is, is great. And really, I, one thing I want to say about that, because I don't think this has come up, um, when you're reporting your extracurricular involvement and your honors and distinctions in the coalition profile, 
you know, you have the opportunity to tell us a lot. You can give us up to eight extracurricular activities and five honors and distinctions. And uh, just a, a word about that, we're really looking for depth of involvement over rather than breadth of involvement. So we would much rather see several years of experience with a, a, a club or a volunteer activity as opposed to, you know, you did one event one weekend and then you did one thing over here. So. Okay, part two of the question is also, would you consider college in the high school equivalent to AP classes? And this is a very common question, you know, is Running Star, college in the high school, AP, what is uh, better? And there really is no right or wrong answer. Again, when it comes to doing college in the high school or other Running Start or dual enroll enrollment type courses, we really just want to make sure you're not doing just PE or, you know, vocational technical courses, that you're actually taking academic um, courses that are not remedial, so you're challenging yourself um, and really doing the max that you can. So, Let's see, Debbie, this question I think we oh, answered yeah. already. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Oh, Kyle. Kyle, okay. Uh, I'm a junior in high school from New York State. And I'm really worried I won't get accepted to the University of Washington because I have a lower GPA than the average student. Do you have any advice for me between now and when I apply in September of next year? Yes, Kyle, I'm so glad you asked. We have <laughs> lots of advice. Uh, I think the biggest piece of advice, like I was just saying a moment ago, is to really make sure that you are taking advantage of, of what's available to you at your high school, whether that be AP courses, IB, um, college in the high school, other um, dual enrollment programs. Um, going above and beyond the minimum, what we call here in the state of Washington, caters college academic distribution requirements. So those are kind of like core classes that the state requires students to have. I mean, when we look at a typical applicant, then oftentimes they have uh, above and beyond um, those minimums. So making yourself stand out in that way by, by doing the same, I would say. Yeah. And keeping your grades up. Yeah. Impeccable grades would be great. Uh, Anna is asking on the Coalition for the Question section on dependent student information. Uh, on the Coalition, it asks for your parents' gross annual income. If your parents are not together anymore, should you just put the income of the one parent you live with or the annual income for both parents? And um, we get a lot of questions about the um, parents' gross annual income question. Um, Understand first and foremost that that's an optional question, so you don't have to answer that. Um, uh, but when you, if you decide you do want to answer it, um, you can answer it how you like. Um, so I would say, the, if you live with one parent and that's the primary person in your life, um, and probably the one for whom you might be relying on um, kind of financial um, assistance, that would. Um, you could, you'd be okay just putting that one. Um, but if it's both of them, um, both parents are relevant to those, um, to that set of circumstances, then you might put uh, the combined income. And I think we're getting really close to the end here. So if you have final questions, you might want to send those in now or um, reach out to us on admit.uw.edu/connect. Uh, but Jaskaran asks, what's the difference between direct admit into a college versus direct admit into a major? And again, those are just two different pathways, so different uh, programs have different entry points. And for the College of Engineering, they're going to take students, the majority of students who will ultimately graduate with an engineering degree, they're going to take as freshmen coming into the university. Um, direct to major is the pathway for a handful of programs, I believe there's nine total, that take students, a small percentage of students directly as freshmen. But know that even those programs that take that small number, most of the students that ultimately will earn a degree from Foster or I'm trying to think of a couple other informatics, informatics biochem, biochem, music. Those um, students are going to come in as a pre-major. They're going to do the prerequisites. They're going to apply later on and then ultimately earn the degree. So um, the follow-up to that is does this, he's asking, does this uh, guarantee a spot into any major once accepted to the college? Um, you know, guarantee such a strong, it assures you that following certain requirements you're going to be able to earn a degree in that program, yes. All right, uh, Liz is asking, when entering high school coursework in the Coalition Profile Locker, what is the difference between regular and academic for types of class? There is none. Um, <laughs> so if you've done regular or academic, it makes no difference um, to normal classes. 
All right. Um, I think that's all the time we have. This has been fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all the questions. Um, again, if, if you want to follow up, we, we answer phones, we answer emails, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Um, application deadline, November 15th. Apply, apply, apply. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>